Hey guys, this is a, is a new Photoshop tutorial and my first one in English. At first I want to excuse me for my bad English, but I hope you can understand me um, anyway. Okay, let's start. This is my result and now I want to show you how to create this one. It's typical for portraits or objects. This is the background and if you have created this one, you can put in some objects or a person, whatever you want. Okay, to create a new document, click on File, New and choose your size, whatever you want, Resolution 2. And look at that your color mode is an RGB color and 16 bit. 16 bit are needed for um, for a good gradient. Okay, click OK. Um, this is our new layer. To fill the layer with your favorite color, um, you have to click on this symbol, and now. Look for your favorite color. My one is navy blue. Um, the RGB, red, green and blue values are 26 and green is 71 and blue is 102. This is my navy blue. <laughs> Good rhyme. Okay. Um, and to fill your layer with the foreground color um, there's a very nice shortcut you will see I love shortcuts this is the first one holding the alt key and press backspace and our layer is filled with the foreground color now I want to create a new layer for dodging and burning and uh, I need a special layer so I click or hold Control shift and N and there's a new dialog First, I can type in the name Dodge and Burn. Okay, and then I can choose the blend mode, it's overlay. And now I click on this one to fill my layer with overlay neutral color. This is 50% gray. And now look at there's uh, no changing because. This color is uh, neutral for overlay and all the other blend modes in this area here from overlay to hard mix but we want to overlay with on our color okay now I need the dodge and burn tool this is the dodge tool and this is the burn tool and look at that the midtones are chosen and a, an exposure between 25 and 35 percent okay um, now you need a brush a big brush and a soft brush so click here hardness set to zero percent and a bigger one and if you have got Photoshop CS5 you can hold the alt key on your keyboard and the right mouse button and move your mouse or pen if you get a tablet through the right okay this is good and now I've I want to darken the edges okay I click here and go along the edges okay very good very good and now I repeat this step and scale down my brush holding ALT, the right mouse button, and put it to the left. And now I go more in the edges and repeat this one. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, these are our edges and now I want to give some highlights in the center of the picture. So I switch to the dodge tool, midtones are chosen and a similar exposure and I choose another time 
a very soft brush and a big one. Okay, this is too big. Um, this is um, not enough. Holding Alt, right mouse button, move it to the right. Very good. Okay, now I um, put it in the middle and holding the Shift key and moving down the Shift key you always um, move your brush vertically. Okay, another time. Sorry, my computer is not the fastest one. Um, okay, just a second. Okay, and scale it a bit down and repeat it. Okay, very good. And now I want to darken the edges more and give it more contrast. So I choose the elliptical marker tool, yes that's the right name, and make a selection. Okay, I place it in the middle. Okay, I think this is good. And now I want to invert my selection. You can do this over the menu, select, uh, inverse, or with the shortcut, Control, Shift, and I. I do this, Control, Shift, and I, and now this area is selected, not this one. Um, to give it more contrast and darken it, um, I uh, make a new adjustment layer, Levels. And you see in the mask, this one isn't selected, only these ones. Okay, I want to clip the lights by moving this one to the left. See, first result. And to give it more contrast, I pull this one to the right. Okay, that's enough. But I don't want this hard edge here. So I click on the masks panel and feathering the edge. This is very good, but not good enough. I think um, you need more feathering. Okay, but your problem is it's the maximum, 205 pixels. But I've got a very cool tip for you holding the Alt key and click on the symbol here. And now you can apply a filter, a blur filter. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And now you can add another 250 pixels. Say OK. And this is a better result. To come back, holding the Alt key and click another time on the symbol. And we make a before and after. Our color then the first gradient, dodging and burning, and now a vignette. Okay, and now I want to create some highlights in the middle, on the center of the picture. Uh, we need a new layer, Control, Shift and N, and press directly Enter. Okay, choose the brush tool, 0% hardness and a big one. Okay, and we need white as the foreground color. So we can press D on our keyboard. So we've got black and white, the biggest contrast. And with pressing X, we can switch between four and background colors. Okay, we need white and the bigger one. Okay, um, now. You need a opacity maybe 30%. That's a good uh, value for dodging and burning and brushing, you see. And now move it in the middle. Okay, another time 20% opacity and I scale it a bit down. Okay, and another or last time a bit littler. Okay, very nice. This is what we want. 
Okay, um, but there's something I don't want in my picture. Maybe you can see it. There are tonal edges. I do not know the right English word, but I hope you can understand me when I show it. Here are some little edges because of the gradient. Um, if you got a good display or a calibrated display, uh, you won't see them. But uh, I doesn't have the luxus, so I see them. And many others would see them too. There's a trick. You can overlap them with a filter, a noise filter. And to do this, you... Ah, uh, sorry, I have to zoom out. Okay. Um, you have to apply this filter on all of your layers. So we have to merge all of our visible layers into one new layer. There's another shortcut. Holding Control, Shift, Alt and E. And now all of our visible layers are merged together. Just a second. Or more. And one second. Okay, very good. Now we got one layer, and if you want, you can delete the older ones, mark them, and press delete. And this is our result. Now we can apply the filter, filter, noise, adding noise. You see my value. 1.5% but you can try it um, because your um, pictures wouldn't be the same like mine. Um, this is too much and this is um, not enough. So look at uh, 2.5 that's a bit too much. What about 2? Yes, it's okay. And 1.5 oh, this is too much. Is the best for my picture, but you have to try it for your pictures. Say okay, and now you have finished. Um, you can now um, combine it with some object or a person, and I show you my result. It's this one. Um, that's me with my cool trombone. And um, there's another color, this is a green, um, this green, and it, is, it creates more harmony between fore and background. So I've chosen the green one. Um, yes, you have to clip or create a mask of your object and then you can put in the new background. To connect the fore and background, it's useful to um, add a new um, adjustment layer, this one solid color, and then you, okay, add it out, okay, and take a green one like this, say okay, blend it in, and um, choose the blend mode color, and set the opacity to eight or ten percent and you will see a better result because the colors are connected okay you can try this at home and um, if you got questions write me a message and i hope you will hear us in the next tutorial maybe it is english again